What luck! What a miracle! One moment I was rushing into the fetid tonsils of that horrible monster. The next, I was plummeting downwards to the jungle floor beyond its reach. I prayed I would land on something soft. Perhaps your head. But nothing, nothing could have prepared me for what was about to unfold. An epic saga of pride, power, and revolution. A struggle for freedom, the likes of which our world has never seen. And it happened like this. were those strange, gentle monsters who towered above me? I could only guess they were the lost tribe of the Mienf, an earlier race of people. But why were they so fearful of those ancient gates that lay just beyond their village? And why did they seem to recognize me? Why? General, who was I to question such things? Trapped as I was deep underground, I was more curious, I must admit, about the location of Little Orpheus. a great city, a mighty power. Yet your nymph squatted like savages in huts at its boundary. They did. And the answer to that mystery lay beyond my grasp at that point. Because it was a wonder, it truly was. The lost city of Agartha. I hope I may one day see it myself. Oh, General, if only you could. Unfortunately, as I shall explain, should you seek Agartha now, you wouldn't find it. It has been utterly destroyed. Utterly destroyed? Utterly, General. A tragic loss. A convenient loss. I imagine archaeologists weeping as I tell you. But most importantly, before we continue, you must understand one crucial fact about its destruction. Which is? It wasn't my fault. Huh? <laughs> 
unfortunate Mienk, trapped and kidnapped and dragged away only to return as vicious foot soldiers to some unknown tyrant. And yet, there was something familiar about the Shtokovna they were forced to wear on their heads, which I was sure were being used to control and enslave them. And what was that? General, it curiously resembled the radio sets I used to tinker with as a child. Radio sets? It was very curious. It was very curious. It was extremely curious. An ancient technological metropolis, powered by a glowing resin carved from the very earth? A glowing resin carved from the very earth. Do you see, General? <sighs> I fear you are about to enlighten me. drained by the impact, but whoever had stolen it and brought it here was no doubt planning to use the Agartan resin to charge up the atomic bomb, restoring the device to its full potential. What sort of man would come up with such a monstrously reckless scheme? Perhaps the type of man who has such limited understanding of atomic energy that he thinks an ancient metropolis can be powered by shiny marbles.
I am curious, Ivan Ivanovich. You talk and talk about this great subterranean city, yet what you describe sounds strangely familiar. It does in some way bear an uncanny resemblance to the glorious architecture of Comrade Alexei Dushkin. Wouldn't you agree? Done yet, General. I have never heard of this great Tavarish Dushkin or his works. Interesting. Because you were photographed on the steps of his marvelous Visotka na Krasnich Varota, shaking hands with the Glavni constructor. That was the chief designer? The sweaty little fat man with the bad hearing? Mind your mouth, Ivan Ivanovich. And don't think you can distract me by slandering one of the great visionaries of our time. Without him, neither of us would be sitting here now. I must remember to thank him for that, General. enslaved mink were trying to stop me. I was sure of that now. I find myself sympathizing with them, I must admit. No, General, then I have failed to win you over. Uh-huh. A point of agreement at last. Again, General, are you mocking me? That would be unprofessional, comrade. I will try harder to convince you then. It is, after all, a cautionary tale of unleashed tyranny. It is a cautionary tale of unleashed idiocy. But please, do continue. Ha <laughs> ha! 
stepped from the cable car onto a plateau at the center of the city, where a palace, a vast acropolis, stood. I was reminded of Chelyabinsk Sorok. May I ask how you know of Chelyabinsk Sorok? My Aunt Masha was a traveling tinker who married a beef investigator from Zlatoust. She told me of a secret but wonderful city in the West, an edifice of sheer power, humbly serving the will and needs of the people. Yes, unfortunately, that story didn't end so well. No, that's what Auntie Marsha told me. <laughs> and perhaps that is why I was also reminded of it. Because the moment I touched the floor in that place, I could tell something was very, very wrong. City felt as if it was shuddering. I could only imagine what I would find at the heart of the vast temple. If it isn't a giant glowing marble, I'm going to be very disappointed. in sphere that overshadowed all of the others. I caught glimpses through the twisted architecture. And it was then I saw him. Him? The thief, the enslaver, the tyrant, sucking the power from this wondrous city as he drained the very lifeblood of the ancient civilization and drew it into the atomic embrace of little Orpheus. With a song in my heart, I raced onwards to stop him.
drained of its power. The magical heart of the city cracked, and it sent shockwaves through the world around me. A true monster general, willing to bring down the mountain itself upon Agatha and bury it forever in his ruthless scheme. I could not save that wondrous brace, general, to my shame and regret. But I resolved myself to avenge the men, to recapture little Arbius, and to bring that tyrant to justice. Careless hero fall forever through those unknown skies. Will he discover the identity of the brutal thief commanding the army of the Menk? What chance does he have of ever returning to his beloved homeland? How long can the general's patience last? All of these questions and more will definitely be answered in the next exciting episode of Little Obvious.